Welcome to this video. Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the street photography settings on the Fuji X100V, and what better way to do it than to take you with me as I shoot some photos. I'm gonna tell you what I love about the camera and some of the features that I'm gonna talk about. One, the film simulation uh, settings on here, the compact size. Obviously, I can actually tuck it in my back pocket, so that's nice. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the built-in ND filter, which is available on photo, but not video. We're also gonna talk about some of the ways you can customize this, including Fuji recipes, which are just settings you uh, program into the exposure and image quality controls that you can recall using the custom settings. And we're also gonna talk about the Fuji smartphone app, which is kind of a secret weapon. So let's get into it. So one of the things that I want to do is demonstrate the different uh, film simulations. The first uh, film simulation I used was Acros or Acros on the Fuji X-T4 and that really made me kind of fall in love with monochrome again. So I have the control ring here set so that when I turn that you can see it switches to the different film simulations. So here we have at the top is uh, Provia, Velvia, Astia. And they all have kind of a description, but you just have to learn. Eterna Cinema is probably my favorite color one, and Acros. Now I have it set to Acros uh, yellow filter. You have like a red filter, green filter, uh, and I have it set to a yellow filter. And it gives it a nice dark contrasty look, um, so you can see that. So like I'm gonna get a car in the uh, right there. Uh, we can play that back. So you can kind of see it has a nice old-timey vintage look, high contrast. I really, I really like that. Now, another thing we're going to talk about is on this camera, there's a built-in ND filter, which is crazy to me. But what's even crazier is it's only for photos. It's not for videos. So what you do is you, uh, you take this lever right here and you just pull it to the side and hold for, oh, get out of play mode. I'm going to pull it to the side and I'll wait three seconds. So I had the ND filter on, and so you now see with it off, this is the exposure. So if I put the ND filter back on, it goes four stops, I believe. So you see I have F2, so I'm shooting in F2. This is the cool part. So I'm wide open, but it's daylight, and I'm able to get uh, cut that light with the ND filter. So we're gonna leave the ND filter on for a little bit. I'm gonna actually try to get some motion blur with these cars driving by. So I'm gonna actually increase my shutter speed to one over eight. Um, and then I'm gonna to have to bump this up to like a F8, let's say. And now of course, we're at a stoplight so there's nothing to shoot that's moving. I might just drag my shutter a little bit. Uh, and I'm just kind of going for panning with the cars, trying to get those streaks. Here's a nice truck going through the intersection. I get down low. Oh, that's kind of cool. Right there. I like these muscle cars looking here, so I'm going to try to get some uh, nice drag with them. Actually, I might want a high shutter speed on that and stop the motion. So let me go back down to F2. And our ISO is really, really high. But let's see what it does. Uh, I'll play that back. I don't think I got that. So it's dim. We'll see what it's like in the computer. Um, here are some of the other shots uh, and the motion blur. That's kind of nice. That might look good in the in the computer. Uh, but it's all just trial and error. I'm going to shoot the Chapman building with all the variety of film simulations. So this is um, 60 seconds. Actually, I'm going to bump that up because my hand is shaky. And I'm going to increase the ISO to uh, 800. So I'm going to click off one here. So that was called uh, Provia. Now I'm going to move to Velvia. This is Velvia. I'm going to move to 
Astia. This is supposed to be soft, is what it says. And then I'm gonna move to classic chrome. That looks a little more vintage-y watercolor. Pro negative high, and then pro negative standard. And then I'm gonna go to classic negative and uh, Eterna Cinema, one of my favorites, kind of film look. Some skateboarders, had to get that for a second. And then I'm gonna go to Acro. So this is my black and white favorite look here. There's a monochrome, set, monochrome setting, but I like the Acros or Acros, however you call it. And then I'm gonna go down all the way to monochrome. And I think there's, is there one more? Sepia, which I haven't really played with. So you can kind of see there, I'll put them up on the screen. So I'm on classic negative now. So one of the things that's good about this is a small size. I have my coffee in one hand, I'm shooting. Um, I do notice though that I bump, this moves the focal point, this little uh, joystick. So I do when I'm holding it one handed, my thumb tends to bump that. And I also notice I tend to bump uh, this is the ISO wheel, so now's a good time. It's not the ISO wheel, it's the front command wheel. Now's a good time to talk about the exposure controls. So right here you have a manual dial for shutter speed, but you can set it to A, which means the camera will take care of the shutter speed. Right here you have these kind of tool, uh, two knurled handles on the edge of the aperture ring. So you can see on the top there, there's aperture numbers clicks very satisfyingly on each aperture. If you set it to A, the camera takes care of the aperture. But I like these handles, they're nice, uh, easy to grip. But I noticed there was no real easy way to, uh, to set the ISO. A guy on Instagram I follow, Tom Medvedich, and he suggested, I said, do you have any tips? And he said, use the front command dial for your ISO. And I found that that was a good suggestion because there really is no uh, physical dial for the ISO. So right here I have the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, everything's in, in uh, easy reach. So those are the manual uh, controls and uh, it's pretty satisfying. I do notice I sometimes will bump this uh, dial and similarly sometimes I will bump this uh, focus point controller. That's probably the thing that I, bothers me the most right now is when I'm gripping the camera, I'm gonna bump that focus point. Um, so that, that's kind of a bummer. But those are the exposure controls. It's super small, easy to handle, easy to shoot one-handed. All the controls are, are within easy reach. And uh, yeah, you can see that like the, right there in the corner is the focus point. So I, I move it up and over with the joystick or you can tap to focus as well. And I actually have it on touch shutter. So every time I touch the shutter, it takes a picture. Or I touch the screen, it takes a picture rather. That's kind of a cool arch right across the way. We're so far though. That is one thing you have to be comfortable with a 35 millimeter lens because that's all it is. That's all you have. I'm gonna just shoot straight across like that. Oh, you're, you're fine, you're fine. Any cool little alleys around here? Maybe the other way. Uh, there's one back here a little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna head over. Pablo knows where there's a cool alley to shoot. Uh, might get some cool compositions there. This is more about the settings in the camera than the street photography kind of approach. But I think um, always looking for opportunities, um, angles, reflections, contrast. Um, I think contrast is one of the biggest reasons I like the film simulation, the Acros film simulation on here, um, low angles and kind of get the sky and the, the skyline and the buildings up against. That's actually an interesting, I'm just gonna turn 
That's cool. I'm actually gonna try, I have two recipes that I built into here, America the Blue Hour, and I'm gonna turn that one on right now. I'm gonna go over there. C1 is where I save that. Ooh, look at that. Very blue. And then now I'm gonna click over and for comparison, go to gold, which is C2, and then So what's interesting is the film simulation, which I don't use all the time, but it, it kind of sparks that creativity, I think, of the different looks. And I, I like that idea of trying to emulate film. Um, just sort of makes you think differently about the composition and colors and things like that. So that's one is the film simulation. It's, but it's, it's more of just a device. It's not like a, a real, I usually edit the raw files and I don't. Um, but if you were gonna send these to your smartphone and post them, the JPEGs are, are great. I mean, that's what people kind of rave about is like, oh, straight out of camera, I can get this film simulation. It's good, I like that. Um, probably the other thing is, um, I enjoy the manual controls. I feel like this screen is amazingly clear and I feel engaged in what I'm shooting. Like it feels very kind of raw and immediate. And this is, this screen definitely pulls you in. It's got a great crisp look to it. Sometimes I feel like when I put them in the camera, they're actually a little bit darker than I thought they were. So maybe I need to adjust <laughs> the display brightness here. So all cameras aren't perfect. What's one thing though you wish this camera had that it doesn't have currently? I wanted to use it for video and film some kind of vlog style. I mean, obviously it doesn't have the flip screen, but it actually has a weird 2.5 millimeter audio jack. So I had to order a converter. So I haven't been able to test that. So that was a little off-putting. Um, but I, I, I appreciate it not, it has a flip screen, but I appreciate that it's not a fully articulating, uh, just forces you to think differently, but you know, I would probably do better on my vertical compositions if it was fully articulating. Um, other than that, there is a there is a Fuji film simulation called Eterna Bleach Bypass, and it's kind of a weird look. You probably wouldn't use it, but I actually wish, it's on the X-T4 that I rented, and I noticed when I got this, it's not on that, so maybe that'll come in an update, but that's something I thought would be cool. One final thing on on this, and this was actually advice from um, fellow Fuji X100V shooter, Tom Medvedic. Uh, he said, make sure you set it up to shoot in JPEG and RAW. And I thought that was great advice because um, you have the film simulation, so you can choose that film simulation for your JPEGs, but if you're shooting a JPEG and a RAW, then you have the power of the RAW file. And let's say the film simulation didn't really capture everything that you thought it did or you want to tweak it or adjust um, then you can you can do that with the raw file and i found the raw files are really really powerful they're amazing um, one of the things that drew me to this is when i took some photos with the xt4 i just felt that it captured light in in a just uh, a pretty powerful way i don't know we talk about dynamic range on video more but I just felt like the, the highlights and the shadows, the Fuji RAW file just managed those beautifully and I had a lot of control. Um, and I've been putting these into Capture One, so that's kind of something I've been working on, but I heard Fuji uh, RAW files actually did better uh, through Capture One, so I've been dedicating all my Fuji files to Capture One. So I'm learning more there and uh, I will be sharing more as we go along. So, Thank you for joining me in this video. Thank you to Pablo from Buenos Dias Imagery for filming this whole thing. Um, go check out his channel. And if you liked any part of this video, give it a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if you're into street photography, if you have the Fuji, any one of the cameras, and let me know if you have some tips, um, you thought I missed something, or if you learned something from the video that is possibly useful. See you in the next one.
Peace.